<laughs> All right, so this is sort of video two. I'm jumping ahead of myself, but I want to get these parts poured before I move back into the molds because this is going to be a quick video. I want to edit it down and get it out there on YouTube. Uh, the second of a series, but first one I'm doing. I am trying some new products from Polytech. So typically I use a little like products. Never had a problem, never had a problem with communication, shipping, anything being ordered, anything bad. They've always answered the phone, got everything right back to me, so I've had no complaints. Well, Polytech and Alumalite are now, um, they, they're together. I'm not sure who bought who or how the merger happened, but um, some of the products that I used to buy from Alumalite are no longer available, but Polytech has them. And some of the products that I couldn't get from Alumalite, I would have to call Smooth On for. And anybody that's watched any of my other videos knows that I don't really care to deal with Smooth On. So Polytech has some really interesting products in their product line. So when I found out they were merger, or merged, I contacted them and just told them that I did a lot of Alumalite work and I wanted to try some products. And they told me what to order. I ordered it and now I'm gonna test it. So this first video, super simple, super fast. This is mold making 101 series, casting resin parts for a Boba Fett blaster. So here we have front and rear molds that I made. Uh, super simple molds, just block molds with some pins in them and the pins get replaced with screws and that leaves me tapped and filled holes. So all I've done so far is sprayed Alumalite's UMR. Superhero pose. Uh, I sprayed the UMR onto the molds uh, over by the window because I don't want to breathe it. Actually, I didn't. I did it right here, but you should actually spray it by the window um, or outside or in front of a fan or a recirculator or something. It's not terrible for you, but if you're going to do this all the time, your best bet is probably to uh, get a ventilated space for it. I do it in a, like a 15 by 20 room, so it's not terrible, but again, ventilation is actually going to be your friend in this case. So anyways, I am going to, I've already got these released, I've already got my pins in. Um, I have one more pin, uh, actually nope, here it is. So this pin actually works for both, but in this case I'm going to use a different pin. All that really needs to happen to make these molds is, I'm going to put these on this side instead because they're going to clip in a little better. So my pins are interchangeable. Pins are in place. After you've made your mold, this is the process that happens in order to make duplicates of your parts. Now this is the first try. I've never used this product before. I don't really know how it's going to turn out. But we're going to give it a shot on camera and see if we can have a big success. So pins in the mold. Everything looks good. I know they're seated. I know it's in the right spot. Put the mold together. I'll go here and I pinch it before I flip it. Once I flip it over, I just put one of my clamps on it with this. Now, if I can see the line in the mold, it's probably going to leak out. So I'm going to clamp this fairly tight. The tighter I clamp it, the better the mold, uh, the parting line is going to be. The thinner the line is going to be. Same thing with this one. I'm going to leave the pins down. I'm not going to have the pins on this side because they could fall or move. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to lay it on here. I'm going to put the second one on. I'm going to flip it. And I am going to clamp this one. Same thing that I did with the other one. Now I'm making sure not to let the pressure off of this until I get the clamp on because I don't want those pins to move. So now both of these are ready to go and ready to pour in the plastic. Now the plastic I am going to use is going to be 60. I'm going to use Easy Flow 60. So this is Easy Flow 60 and I got some extra containers so I could tell which was which. So this is the Easy Flow. So they come in gallon kits. 
and it's always nice to know how you're supposed to mix them. So this is combined proper amounts of A and B in a clean mixing. It's one A and one B by volume. If you wanna do it by weight, it's one to 0.9. So that's gonna be, normally I do everything by weight, but in this case, I'm gonna do it by volume. So, I need to get my stir stick ready. Prepping is everything. So the gist here is that I can take amount that I already have used or have already created and I can weigh it. And it weighs about 20. And this is the larger of the two amounts. So I'm gonna need about 40 for both. So even though I'm gonna do these, even though I'm gonna do this by volume, I can lay it on here to get the weight right. So I don't know if I've cut the lids on these yet. So I need to find my knife. Which I haven't, so I'm gonna open these. You really should never open these to use them. You should fix your caps and cut them and, and peel out these stoppers in here. But, you know, hindsight's 2020. So I'm gonna do about 25 to 30 of each. I'm gonna figure out roughly how much 25 is here. Now, like I said, this is by volume, not weight. So I just need to set another cup next to it. That's all I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pour this in. I realize that you're not able to see a ton, but volume is pretty close. I use a little bit transparent cup so I can just see through the bottom. So this is going to be as simple as pouring them together. And mixing the part. Now the open time on this is pretty quick. You've got about a minute. Now this is their lowest viscosity plastic, so it's supposed to create virtually bubbleless casts without degassing. Now I can see a few bubbles, but they, they may come out during the pour. So these molds that I made, which I'm going to show you in another video how to make them, are set up so I don't have to do anything special in order to get the, the part poured. I just have to pour slow, inconsistent, something with low viscosity. So that's part one. I'm pouring part number two. Just wait until they get to the top. As soon as I can see it, it's done. And like always, I'm gonna pour a little bit into my transformer because I make this little guy and this copy every chance I get. So that's literally all there is to casting three-dimensional parts. This is what I would consider here, this is a two-dimensional part. It's really only got one side. So it's gonna just, this is for something that I would just glue down or glue together with something else. So if I don't need both sides, it's a one, one piece mold. If I need both sides, I do a block mold. This should take three to five minutes. Um, I'm probably going to meander around the shop and not do very much more commentating while this cures. Once this is fully cured, I will try a couple of other plastics that I received today and do some comparisons on them. So uh, yeah, enjoy staring at nothing and uh, I'm sexy.
So typically when you're done using your plastics, you're not gonna burn through this plastic in record time. And if you're looking at the stream screen, you can probably see that it's already turning white. This is a white, white plastic. Normally what I use is a, is a yellow base, like a cream. So when you're done with your plastics, you should always pour some canned air on top. And what it does is it forces all the moisture out and adds, doubles, triples up the shelf life. So if I had used the caps, it would have been better. I still would probably at the end of the day uh, put canned air into it to clean it up. So while those are going, I could plan the next one, which the next I have is either a rotocast. Now I have Easy Flow 120, it's a rotocasting plastic. That's what I would use to say when I make a bumblebee helmet. So this is going to be all taken apart and all these pieces created as one. They're going to be open molds. I'm going to pour the plastic in and I'm going to cast it around. It's going to build up size. And then when that's done, they will screw together to make the entire helmet. So a rotocast plastic or something with a higher viscosity is what I'd use for that. So I also have RC3 by Alumalite to compare this to. So the RC3 A and B for Alumalite is basically the other version of this casting plastic that I just showed you. Now I'm looking at the casting plastic I just showed you and even though it cured really fast, even though it is curing really fast, because I can see things on the edge of it, I can see some liquid on the edge, I know that it's nowhere near cured. It's going to take another five to ten minutes. Once that's done, I'm going to pull those out, check them over, see how nicely the pores come, see how nicely it cleans. Then I'm going to pour the RC3, maybe another video. Uh, that way I can put both of them out and then I can do sort of a summary to compare them. Uh, some of the other parts, so while this is going, some of the other parts that I would typically uh, pour. So let me show you. So here are some other parts that are 2D. So this part is off of the MR helmet and it's made of steel. It doesn't really sit down well. But nothing needs to be on the back, it just needs to be flat. So I could pour this in a two piece and make sure it's flat on the back, but if I drill a couple small piece, small holes, I drill some small holes in a piece of wood, and I'm going to just use this upper camera so it's going to be farther away. Um, if I were to just put this on a piece of wood, and I'll show you. If I were to drill holes in this wood and use this, it would now sit down flat and I would seal the side. All I would do is build the mold box above this and I would pour the silicone over it and after about six hours I'd have a completed mold ready to pour. When I get ready to pour it, I'd use my level and make sure that my where I'm pouring is very level and that'll make sure that the final part is very level. Now, these types of molds small big i mean this could be as big as a helmet with a dome or as small as one of these these are the easiest parts to pull uh, same thing with this part these are all simple 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 parts now when you get to something more complex like let's say this this is a uh, steel cast replica of a uh, luger used for the han solo blaster now clearly this has two sides so if I were to make this and only do half of it, like I did that one, I'm going to end up with half a gun. On the other side, it's going to be smooth and not look like a gun, not look like a blaster, and people aren't going to like that. So this requires claying up and doing a two-piece mold. That's really the only reason and or difference between these two types of molds is if you need detail on both sides and how you want the parting line. All these guns that I'm showing you, all these parts that I'm showing you in the next week or so, I'm going to be doing com more and more complex molds and more and more testing on these products. So hopefully by the time I'm done, I'll have the completed kit, completed test and reviews of all these products from both Alumalite and Polytech that'll let us know 
really, if you want to do a gun, if you want to do a blaster, if you want to do a backpack, if you want to do full pieces of armor, I plan to figure out um, which products from each company are best for that, compare them. If Smooth On's better, then I'm going to let you know Smooth On's better, but buyer beware when you order from them because their customer service is terrible. Uh, the next mold I'm going to make is going to be a very small mold. It's either going to be this shroud, which is part, or these rings, which they look fairly equal when you think about them. When you're, when you're considering like what goes into making these molds, this mold is going to take me two minutes. I have no idea how to make this mold. So when I get ready to show you how I make this mold, I'm going to, it's going to take a lot of time of me explaining what's going on and and probably a lot of stress to get it to actually work the way I want. Now, this part, I don't care if I keep it. I don't care what happens to it. It looks like it's completely cured all the way to the edges. So let's release it and see what we got. I can probably move these safely right now a little bit. I don't know if they're fully cured because they're a little thinner than the transformer. So the demolding process for these plastics, and this is the very first time I've used these plastics, first of all, I can see that it really released easily. It has, it does not want to stay in that mold. And I'll tell you what, that is a really nice, clean finish on that. This, this mold was made from an old belt buckle, and I know where all the scratches are, and this really did make a bubble-free cast. I'm, I'm pretty impressed. I would definitely use this for any of the parts on the gun and not worry about how they're going to turn out. Now, it's still a little soft. I can still bend some of the flashing. Um, I can probably cut the... I want to see how it cuts because it's kind of important. So that cut clean and nice. The, the, the sooner after demolding your part that you can cut any pieces you don't want off, the cleaner and easier it is to cut and then you won't need any sanding. So I tend to clean all my parts with an X-Acto as soon as they come out like so. So it's getting hard fast now. So yeah, that's that's pretty good casting resin. I'm, I'm going to like it. Now one thing that I do sometimes with Alumalites is if I want this to be rounded I can flex it a little bit. And this is curing so fast it's a little rigid to stretch it. So for parts that I pour flat and I want to make them 3D I would either have to release it a little sooner, pop it out of the mold a little bit sooner, or maybe use one of the slower resins. I'll bet that Rotocast would be perfect for this. So demolding this part. I'm hoping we're not too soon. I, I should have set a timer. It's a really good idea when you have this just to set a quick timer. Um, Google is great for that because you can just tell them to set your timer for you. So as I pull the part apart, it really released easily again. Uh, you can see that very little spread out into the mold, which is surprising because when it's this thin, I would expect it to spread out into the mold a little more. So now I release the part. Now, for these parts, I expect these to be a little soft so I can remove these screws. This is why I'm taking them out early. So I would have expected it to cure a little faster, but it didn't. But that's okay because... I want to take these screws out. Now I mistakenly put these in the mold the wrong way. I put the screws on the inside so I can't, once it fully hardens I can't really use a screwdriver. But this is actually a good test because I always take things out a little early and let's see if it if it returns to shape. If it does, we're in business. This is definitely a little early to, to take these out. Not my best is what I'm trying to say. But as you can see, it returned to shape. And these parts are supposed to arch around and these screws hold it in. So ultimately, it's pretty good. It's got a nice clean, uh, clean edge to it. Now, it's hard enough that I don't think I can cut this piece off. So I will probably... I'll probably just uh, use my bandsaw on it. Before I would ship these to anybody, I would always use the bandsaw, I think. It's, it's the quickest and easiest way. So this one, so as you can see, I got a good clean release, a good clean cast. Really picked up a lot of the detail without 
flashing out too much. You can see a little bit of the blue clay is still left in because I've really only pulled like one out of this mold just to clean it. So this is sort of a clean, a clean pull, meaning I, I put a part in, I pull it, and I leave it and let all the blue clay come out with it instead of trying to clean it by hand. This one I'm going to wait on. I'm going to wait till it's fully cured. I'm going to clean up the shop a little bit. I'm going to take this downstairs and clean it out with a in the sink with hot water. It'll heat that blue up and get it all out so the next parts will come out cleaner. So I am going to run around while this thing hardens fully. Quick plug for DeWalt. This thing is awesome. I needed an electric screwdriver and I bought this yesterday and I thought it was uh, broken because it didn't do anything. And I found that what you have to do is push the button and turn it the way you want it to turn. This is unbelievably handy if you work in a shop because you can put your part in, get it started, and turn just a little. Super easy. So yeah, I don't know how many mold making people need electric screwdrivers, but everybody should have this love of their life in their life, I'm telling you. So this, uh, just so everybody knows, if you watch this later, this isn't really meant to be a live stream. I don't even know if I'm going to keep doing live streams. Uh, I don't know how interesting it is to stand around and watch me do this. Um, typically what I would say if I were going to keep doing these is now that I've done this product test and I say, yep, that's good stuff, this would be a good time for you to go out and read up on it on the Polytech website. Uh, if, you, if you're really thinking about making molds, I would say get on Alumalite and Polytech now or even if it's during the week 9 to 5, get on a call. Call them and ask for Mike or ask them for somebody that can help you with ordering and what to do. Tell them Mason or Stormrider told you that to call them if you were confused. and They're one of the best companies I've ever dealt with. So it's going to be to your advantage to use them over some of their competitors because, man... Customer service is just so much better. And to me, the products, I've used a lot of products all around. Um, the cheaper ones tend to be less, more more harmful to you. So if the product's cheaper, it's probably got some things in it that you don't want to breathe or you don't want to deal with. So um, I think, how do I put this in here? So more expensive products are usually platinum or, or, or better for you, but they're just, they're a little bit better products. You get less failures, you have less inhibition, you have less moisture issues. There's a lot of different things that go into this, but for the most part, when it comes to mold making, you get what you pay for and smooth out is a little cheaper if your, their products are low, in my opinion, and I'm no doctor, from what I can read and see in their MDS sheets, it looks like they're not as healthy. Uh, but mostly it's the customer service. I mean, products are products. If you really know what you're doing, you can find products just about anywhere at a, at a, a multitude of costs. But if you want that, the, that sort of personal factor and the, the ability to get in there and call somebody when you have problems, I can't say enough about Illumilite and Polytech. I'm going to use this as an estimate. So this is starting to firm up quite a bit now. So I'm going to pull the other one out, but it's going to be a little soft also. And then I'm going to wrap it up. So 
almost no leakage, which is great. I had it clamped pretty tight. The part is really clean. I mean, that's, I'm really surprised at how clean these last couple have been with this new plastic. The key here with this plastic though is going to be, it's gonna be how strong it is when I start to put the screws in and put it together because these new molds are made to totally screw together. Um, but again, this thing turned out pretty good. I mean, it's not fully cured yet, but you can see there's almost no bubbles. So, and the silicone mold released really easily. So, as far as I'm concerned, this new silicone I've tried, which is the... Platsil 7345. So the Platsil 7345 silicone, which is this, is pretty firm. So far it has exceptional release qualities. I did not degas it and I have virtually no bubbles in it. So as far as I'm concerned, this is probably the way I'm going to go uh, for this Signature Series blasters I'm making. So that's it. That's all I'm going to do today. I'm going to clean these parts up. I'm going to work on another mold. I'm going to record some video for that. Uh, hit us on Instagram, Iconic Props. You've got it on here, Iconic Props TTV. I've got a YouTube channel for Iconic Props. That's where these videos are going to end up. Have a great rest of your day. Deuces. Be somebody.